Hello everyone, uh, I hope you're doing well from wherever you're watching me from. Now, uh, today I want to show you how we use a repo tank to investigate some of the basic properties of a wave. We want to see what to use water wave to describe the general behavior of uh, water, that is in terms of reflection, refraction, and even interference, and also diffraction of a wave. But before you do so, Let's understand how a repo tank works. So the whole setup here, this is the repo tank. Uh, we have the power supply, the power supply for the motor and also the bulb. So already I've already connected that to the main socket. So from here you can able to see what happens. Uh, the bulb produces light to illuminate the ripples. Then the motor as it vibrates, it also makes the, uh, this bar here to vibrate. So we're going to see how the bulb can work. And also we have others, uh, spherical ball, that we're able to see how we can able to help. <coughs> now, inside here, this is where we need to put some water. Now, this actually is the tank. And why is it called ripple tank? Because it produces uh, some ripples on the surface of water. So, I think we need to start and then see, put some water here. So this is the stator bar. The stator bar is supposed to be producing uh, the plane waves, which we'll be able to observe. As uh, the plane, uh, this bar here vibrates, it's supposed to be producing some ripples, and uh, that is what we're about to observe. So what we're going to do is to observe down here. So we're able to observe here. So for us to do that, we have to put off the light so that you can only use uh, the, the, the the light bulb source. So you can able to see the, the bulb. This is what happens uh, when it is vibrating. So the motor here is vibrating. As the motor is vibrating, it makes the bar here to vibrate. And what are you able to observe? You can able to observe the ripples being produced at the surface. Can reduce the frequency. So I'm reducing the frequency by reducing the voltage. Okay. So to produce the circular wave, all I need to do is uh, to change. Uh, just to insert uh, the spherical ball. We have some holes here which you can able to use. Make this a mess. So I'll switch this on so that we see what happens. Uh, to observe clearly, let me switch off the lighting. Good. And you can now see what is happening exactly. Now this produces circular waves. There is now circular wave being produced there. I can uh, increase the frequency at which. So by just increasing this, just increasing the frequency, and you can able to see what is happening. So the frequency has been increased. The frequency has been increased, and if you're not keen, you may not be able to see the ripples. So that means the speed of the motor has been increased. Huh? <laughs> so is, you might be able to see something. So let me reduce the speed of the motor. When I reduce the speed of the motor, that means some. Um, Reducing the speed of the motor means reducing the the frequency yeah, of the source. And if the frequency of the source, you can able to see just pause and then you can able to observe how the wavelength 
is also changing. Remember the wavelength is the distance uh, between two successive uh, wavefronts. Huh? So I'm reducing the speed of the motor. I'm reducing the speed of the motor. Observe what is happening to the frequency of the ripples. Observe what is happening to the frequency of the ripples. So the speed is very low now. Very low, very low speed is very low. All right, now once again, we're increasing the speed. We're increasing the speed. We're increasing the speed. That means frequency also increases. And you may think now the ripples are not moving, <laughs> but they're actually moving at a very high speed. Very, very high speed. You can able to observe the motor. Look at the motor. And the motor moves at a speed that you might be able to see. You may think it is stationary. Yeah, it is. But if I reduce the speed, you see what is happening. You can able to hear even the sound there. That's the difference. Uh, instead of using one ball, I want us to use uh, two balls. Then you see how the ripples will be affected, how the ripples will be affected. So, uh, to touch the surface of water. Okay. Now we have the two balls over there. Remember, we have seen how one spherical ball produces the ripples. So now the observation we want to make is uh, what will happen or how will the ripples be formed uh, when we have the two spherical balls to produce the ripples. So let me put off or put, yeah, put off this light and then this. So now the game is on. The game is on. Have a look at that. Next time we need to reflect this on any surface. The source of wave here and we have the source here and now what you're observing there are regions where the waves are dark so we have the dark regions so the wave produced from here meets with the wave produced from this particular point and if you're very keen you can able to see there are places that are very bright while there are places which are dark now this is about interference. What will happen if I increase the frequency? Look at that. You may think it is stationary, but it's not. 